She's only going to show you zero, though, so that you have to try for the others. Then you put five in the first and zero in the second. Why? Because. Did you read the problem? Because you're finding the value of x bud, plus zero. Bud. Hey, yeah. bud. Hey. Bud. Boys. <laughs> Colton. Stop interrupting her. Learn something. And then that equals one. And you would do that for each one, cause but so, so you just put like put one times point six raised to the zero power, and then you would multiply it by point four raised to the fifth power, and then that would be your answer. For for zero. For, for zero. zero. Math, yes. And then math. you have to do it for one, two, three, four, and five. Where did? You're good. <laughs> she used the formula. Are you videoing right now? Uh huh. Okay, I'm not gonna ask a stupid question then. Why? It's like this. Because <laughs> somebody else might have that question. I guess there's only like three people. Okay. In the like the C <laughs> math <laughs> stat three or math calc three math prob math prob three, three. and then where okay. zero. Is the, okay. You do zero and five, is it because of this? Because he's <laughs> taking five free throws. Uh, and then we're going to change the number of makes. So he's going to make zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And he's a 60 per... <laughs> this is N, right? This is P as a decimal. And then K is going to change. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Trey. Math, please.
not into me. Are you? I am. Or are you getting no, distracted? I got distracted. Okay. This becomes one. They are. Yes. Yes. And then five and ten. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. Nine. Five. Six. Why did Chris was put Chris was <laughs> in the penis? Why? Do you know the need to be one? Why did Chris was put Chris was in the penis? Why did 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 Math, her, and Take away and put in two. No, I got it wrong. No. you guys to do we're gonna make a probability distribution so I want you to put the values of X in list one and the probabilities into list two please two lists they weren't that long so it shouldn't have taken you much time to put them in there the x values in list oh, one sure. the probabilities in list two oh, okay. what do we press to make a histogram mm, second, no. second, second y equals then so we're gonna choose a plot oh, really yeah. doesn't matter so i'm gonna use plot one make sure you turn it on and then we're gonna pick that third icon, the one that I have highlighted. X list is list one, and then you want your frequency to be list two. I said frequency, weird. It, it came out weird. Should look like that. Ooh, what you say? And then we're going to hit graph, right? Wait, how do I get to the, oh, stat plot. 
Now, because I did this with third period yesterday, my window might look better than yours. Oh, no, it doesn't because I graphed some stuff. List two. All right. Um, so I, I put some stuff in my Y equals, so I'm going to go clear that out. It, it, it says error. Does it have go to? Yeah. Go to the error. Oh, All right, so when I hit graph, I can't see much. What do we do? Zoom nine. Zoom nine. Except for zoom oh, nine didn't do us any good either. Well, this is Wait, we're doing you click it again, it's not going to do anything we're else. Yes, we're doing a histogram tray. Oh, List one and what's the List two. The probabilities. List two should have all those. All right, so we're going to change our window. So I want you to hit window. Oof, that's a bad glare. There we go. So our X values. Wait, how'd you get to the window? I hit window. Oh, window. <laughs> now our x values go from 0 to 5, so let's go a little below those numbers so that we don't cut our histogram off on the edges of the calculator. So let's go negative 2 to 7. And then you want the x scale to be 1s, so it counts by 1s on the x-axis. Good? Yes. Our y is the frequency or the probability which are all numbers between 0 and 1. Um, so 0, the minimum? Oh, thank you. I'm looking here and I forget that it does that thing thank you. again. Um, we don't need our x max all the way up at 1. We could, but the biggest probability we have is 0. 0.3456. Six. So why, why don't we go to 0. 0.5? And then make your y scale 0. 0.1. 0. 0.1? Mm-hmm. Just leave that alone. What is that? Or that's a Y. No, okay. Just leave it alone. Okay. And then hit graph, and you Whoa. should have oh, a pretty back. histogram. Can you go back real quick? To my window. Oh, Do that as point one. What? The Y is. Now. <laughs> Are we good? I'm going to zoom back out. how I said list one, list two. All right, so we're going to make a sketch of this histogram over here. Where? There's my ruler. Why is it doing that? Histograms, our bars are going to go from 0 up to 1, just shy of 1. That's him or her making no free throws. Um, from 1 up to just shy of 2, 2 up to just shy of 3, 3 up to just shy of 4, 4 up to just shy of 5. And even though the highest x value is 5, we do need to go to 6. Because zero free throws made starts at zero and goes up to just shy of one. So five three throws being made starts at five and just goes up to shy of six. Because your lines were so six. straight, I thought they were already made. 
Um, no, I just I make graphs quite often, so I get pretty good at it. All right, now. No, I said I get pretty good at making graphs by hand. <laughs> Trey, you're the man. Does that make you feel good? No. All right, so our heights of our bars are going to be our probabilities. This way you guys don't have to flip back and forth. So from 0 up until just shy of 1 is 0 0.01. So it's really not that tall of a graph. It is tiny. And then one up until just shy of two is 0 0.0768. So that's not even up to our first hash mark. When do I get special deliveries? Okay, cool. That's a good question. I water. I do like coffee, but not in the afternoon. Juice. Juice. But that's got caffeine too. Oh, that stuff is nasty. <laughs> oh, a Slurpee. Slurpee. Yeah. Blue raspberry. Yeah, sure. All right. Two up until 3.2304. So just above that second hash mark. I made my big. Three is point three four five six, so that's our tallest one. Oh man, I can't draw a straight line. I can draw a straight hash marks, but not straight lines. Four is point two five nine two, so that's thereish. very disconcerting that you can make a laugh that sounds like a girl so well. So that histogram has a special name. Of course it does. It's called a probability distribution function. I'm going to abbreviate distribution so I can fit the word function in there. And you know, oh. math. So we have an abbreviation for it. So it's also known as a PDF. Uh, PDF. PDF. Oh, what a PDF does is it assigns a probability to each value of x. So the probability when x equals 0 was 0 0.01024. When we want to find the probability x equals 4, that was 0 0.2592. There is a calculator function that will do this for us so that you don't ever have to fill in a table like you did in the warm-up again. That calculator function is called binome, because we're still working with binomial variables, PDF because we want the probability distribution. Now, when you use that calculator function, it's going to ask for three pieces of information if you have the newer calculators. 
Otherwise, you just have to remember it wants the number of trials, probability of success, and the x value you want to find the probability of. Yes. Yeah, I didn't round as far as you guys did. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, so. Where are we? I'm going to put my calculator in the way, show you this actually works. So quit out of your histogram, second mode, so you're back in the home screen. The binome PDF is in the same place as normal CDF, so we're going to hit second bars. I don't know whether it's actually easier to scroll up or down because it's way down at the bottom of the list or way up in the list. Binome PDF, option A. So like I said, newer calculators prompt you for the three pieces of information, the older ones don't. So for our warm up, the person took five free throws, so that's the number of trials. Probability of success was 0.6, he's a 60% free throw shooter, and which one do you want to find? Two. Two, okay. So we're going to put two for the x value. Everybody good? Yeah. Can we do this the same as the equation? Is this the same as the equation? Yes. So instead of having to use that equation, now you guys have a shortcut to get those probabilities. Did you have a question? No? OK. Are we good? Now, that tells you the probability that x equals a certain number. That he makes two free throws out of five. But what if I want to know the probability he's going to make two or more? Two alligator. Yesterday, I showed you that you had to take the probability of two plus three plus four plus five. Well. Guess what? There's a calculator function for that one, too. So we're going to learn about that one here. First thing we're going to do is make a table and a histogram. So we're looking at the values of x still, just like in the warm-up, and the probabilities. The values of x are not going to change. The guy's still taking five free throws. So he can make zero through five. Now we're going to use a different color this time. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now, we are going to look at x is less than a certain number. So I want to find the probability that the guy makes zero or less free throws. Well, there is nothing less than zero, so the probability that he makes zero or less is still just the probability of zero. What's the probability he makes one or less? I would take the probability he makes one plus the probability he makes none. And then for number two, we have to add all three of them? Yes, sir. So, so, so 0 0.01024 plus 0.0768 would be 0 0.8704. And then like Colton said, probability of two or less would be our 0 0.2304 plus this one plus this one. So we're going to add 0 0.2304. So this is 0 0.31744. Probability of three or less is that plus that plus that plus that. That one's 0 0.66304. Four or less is all of them except for the last one. Point nine two 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 four, 
And then I just noticed I put the wrong number here. This was supposed to be a six, not an eight, sorry. And then I'm gonna add the 0 0.07776 and I get one, which makes sense, right? In a probability distribution, all your probabilities added together should be one. That was funny? That they should add to one? Oh, is your soft just slightly? Well, if you've rounded, you might be at a little lower than one. So, okay, can you walk, how do you get like two? This one? Yeah, like what? I took, so here's yeah. one, two. Yeah. I added those three together. Because we're looking at less so than. So you just add them all together, including the one you want to find? Yes, okay. because it's less than or equal to. So I include the one I want. Other questions? All right, we're going to make a histogram of that one. Now, the only thing that's changed here is our y. Instead of our highest being 0.3456, we go all the way up to 1 for our y-axis. How do I get the list 1? Same thing as before, the heights of the bars are our probabilities. So the zero bar looks the same as it did above, barely off the x-axis. Then we jump up to 0 0.08704. Ugh, again. Again, it's six bars, come on. All right, then we go to 31.31, so we'll say there-ish. 0.31744, then 0.663, that looks good. Ah, that was a cruddy bar. Point nine nine no point nine two two and then the last one is one. Oh that was a wonky bar, sorry. Guess what? This ha histogram has a special name too. What's the difference? This one was for x equals a number. This is for x is less than or equal to a number. So we took our probability and any probability is less than it. So we took our probability and everything that came before it, what's the word for that? Huh? I didn't describe that well. Cumulative. cumulative. This is called a cumulative distribution function. And again, I'm gonna abbreviate distribution so I can fit the word function. First, what do you think we call it? CDF. Where have we heard CDF before? We've used a normal CDF before, right? So this is a binomial CDF because we're working with binomial variables. 
Okay. Um, what it tells us is the probability of getting at most X successes in N trials. Binome CDF. Same pieces of information. Number of trials, probability of success, and the X value you're interested in. Yes, by gnome CDF. So now when I ask you to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, instead of having to do the probability x equals 2 plus x equals 1 plus x equals 0, you have a calculator function that will do it for you. May I flip my piece of paper over? Yes. All right. So we also get to learn some new formulas for mean and standard deviation. Woohoo! Because there's not enough of them out there, right? So these are for binomial distributions only. We're going to play a guessing game. We're going to guess the mean. X is the number of heads out of 10 for a fair coin. Now remember another name for mean is expected value. So if I flip a coin, a fair coin, 10 times, how many heads would I expect to get? Five. Why? Because it's half of what, Trey? It's half of 10. We had 10 trials. Probability of getting ahead is 0.5. Number of free throws made out of 10 by a 70% free throw shooter. How many would we expect them to make? Seven. Why seven? Say that again, Trey. Because 70% of 10 is 7. How do you, in a math statement, how do you find 70% of 10? What are you doing? 0.7 times 10. 0.7 times 10, 7. 0.5 times 10, 5. So, if we're looking at the number of successes out of n with a probability of success p, how do you think we find our mean? <laughs> Multiplying what? <coughs> n, n times, times p. So if we're working with binomial distributions, we find our mean by taking our number of trials times our probability of success. Now, unfortunately, the standard deviation is not as easy for make, making you guess. So I'm just going to tell it to you. When it comes to binomial distributions, your standard deviation is the square root of your number of trials times your probability of success times your probability of failure. No. If we square it, then it would be the variance. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. It was a good one. So now we're going to use our new formulas. We're going to use our new calculator functions. And we're going to play with Starburst. Of course you get to eat them afterwards. Now the only problem is I, I bought four bags, two for third period and two for fifth period. And then yesterday I opened all four bags. Why? Get this. How many colors of Starburst are there? Two. There's four. 
There, there's no peace. Where's the peace? I bought four bags of Starburst, and I have no pink. No, wait, actually? No, 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 no wait. Actually. No way. <laughs> Let's find the probability for that. <laughs> I was, like, I opened the first one, and I, like, was digging through it, and I couldn't find pink, so they are like, just dump it, and then I had to so open it. sure no one's come out? Oh! That's like, wild, no. dude. Like, are we allowed to take this? It says, I mean, it has a picture of pink on there. It says I should have strawberry in there. Not a single pink in four bags. Maybe they'll send you a free bag. You should sue. Right? Just pink. Sue. Yeah. I don't want just pink. I do. That's the Maybe best one. Do. So, uh, we are so going to change our probability of success because. Can um, we find the probability of that happening? That's what I was. After we do this problem. <laughs> I bet the dudes that you bought from in the store took them out. They were sealed. You can reseal things. Oh, you got pissed off when I said that you could do that. And you said, why would somebody do that? Why would somebody do that? Like, still, why would somebody, why would somebody do that? You just said they could. No, I agree. Why would somebody do that? What were we even talking about? But I do remember seeing it. I don't remember why. Starburst can be considered an SRS. What does SRS stand for again? Standardized. Something random. Simple random samples. Standardized So when you buy a bag, we can consider it a simple random sample of the whole population of all Starburst candies ever. Since there, boys, since there are four flavors, the probability that we get a cherry is 0.25 or one out of four. I'm really glad I hadn't chose strawberry as my flavor. That really would have been bad. Um, each bag of Starburst contains 200 candies. Suppose we buy one bag. I told you guys I bought more than that because actually they don't contain 200. They contain about 100, so I need two bags for this to work. But there were, there were no strawberries. So um, we are interested in the number of cherry Starbursts in the bag. First thing I want to do, since our bag, I broke it. I broke it. Oh. Um. Sorry. I'm just thinking through. I could change it to strawberry, and we could find the probability that we get zero strawberries. What? No. I don't need one. Do you? It's okay. I know. You can eat them. Um, do you guys want to change it to strawberry and find the probability Wait, that we... Make sure that you got the amount of that you would? Okay, um, the 
Do you want to find the probability that there's zero cherry or zero yes. strawberries? Yeah. I don't yeah. care. All right. So we're going to change the flavor to strawberry. Okay. This will be easier because there's zero. A hundred percent because it happened. <laughs> so strawberry. All right. So first thing, we're going to double check. so funny, dude. That this is a binomial distribution. How do we check that it's binomial? Bins. 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 Probability of success, number of trials, um, what is a success and a failure, and then independence. So, do we have a success and a failure? Yeah. Yes. What's a success? Strawberry. 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 Yeah, what if there's zero strawberries? Then you We're going to find the, the probability there's zero strawberries. Mm -hmm. And you did fail. Straw. Straw. Sure. Straw and then not straw would be a failure. <laughs> now, we're going to assume independence. And we're actually going to get into the independence part after we get through these problems. So for now, just trust me, we can assume independence. Do we have a fixed number of trials? Yeah, one says a 200. And then what's the probability of success? What's the probability I get a strawberry? 0. 0.25. 0. 0.25. Okay, how many are actually in one bag? 200. 100. That's why I got two bags for each class. Really? Yes. Yes. Um, so what is N? I know it's redundant, but what is N? 200. What's P? 0. 0.25. So what, how many strawberries should I have expected to get? 50. 50. So our mean would be 50 because we would take our sample size, number of trials, times the probability of success, and a fourth of 200 is 50. So I should have gotten 50 in two bags, but I got none. Interpret. I kind of already said that. We would expect 50 straws in 200. 50 straws. Ms. Little, did you hear Trey's joke? Nope. When she asked her for it to be straws, he said strawberry. <laughs> 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 that's why you guys no, have been so cracking, asked, but that's strong, why you've been laughing. No, it's actually the funniest thing in the world. expect 50 strawberries in a bag of 200 on average. Standard deviation. So we're going to use that new formula I showed you up above. We're going to take the square root of 200 times 0.25 and then 1 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75. times 0.25 times 0.75 and then square root that. So we get 6.124 if I round. Yeah. How do we interpret standard deviation? Thank you, ma'am.
hopefully I'm afraid to the couch later. Might give us such a small number that it's like doesn't even make sense. Any questions so far? I'm just really lost. Don't you have any like shortages of strawberries or something? No, I sat and Googled like how many strawberries I should have, the distribution of the colors. Because we're taking a little bit of liberty and assuming that the distribution of the colors should be the same for every bag. Did you count the other colors? You see the no, um, but I looked up the distribution of the colors and you're supposed to have the most yellow and then orange and then red and then pink is the that smallest. Makes sense. Why would they change? They just, I, I don't know how oh, I got four bags with no pain. All right, so we're going to change question number five. What is the probability of getting exactly zero strawberries? Straw flavored. So this is really asking you what's the probability x equals zero, which I'm going to flip and come back to this so you don't need to flip. But I just taught you a calculator function for when you're looking at an exact x value. We're going to use binome PDF. We're going to put the number of trials, probability of success, and the x value we're interested the number in. Of trials n. The number of trials is n, and how 200. many? 200. Probability of success? 0.25. That's what I was worried about. And then we're. Wait, what's the x value? Zero. Oh, yeah. Zero strawberries. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. I don't know my Second bars, binome PF, 200.250. Oh my god. So if we get E to the negative 25th, so the probability that I got 200 starbursts and not a single strawberry in there is extremely rare. I should go buy a lottery ticket. Sorry. No, no. You don't because go to the lottery. <laughs> what, what if we put four? I feel like it's a lot more likely. Oh. Doesn't stats teach you that you're not likely, like you're not more likely? <laughs> yes, but this is extremely unlikely, and it happened to me, so maybe I'm on a, a, a like, you lucky streak. Oh, shoot. Like there are no streaks. Oh, I already okay. taught you that, yeah. too. If you're going to diss on baseball, you can't go and say that. Fine, Trey, fine. All right, so Megan did make a good point. She goes, but you really bought four bags. So I bought 400 Starburst and got zero strawberries. So it was an even smaller probability that that would happen to me. Wow. <laughs> All right, now um, we're going to change cherry to strawberry, but we're going to keep it at at least 60 because otherwise there's no point in looking at at least zero. It would be one. So we're just going to leave that number at 60. Otherwise, it's a pointless question. Now, at least... Does that mean greater than or less than? Uh, greater than. Greater than. So this is asking us the probability x is greater than. Probability x is greater than or equal to 60. Now I taught you a calculator function for that as well. The only difference is that this calculator function binome CDF is for when x is less than a certain number. So I have to take my answer and subtract from 1. Now, guys, this is really important. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 60, what is the opposite or the complement? 
Uh, the, the, the point, the point less than what? 40. 40? No. If I want to find the probability oh. of getting 60 or more strawberry starburst, I would have to subtract from 1 when I use the binome CDF. What would be the opposite of 60 or more? I feel like we're all on the same page here. Are we talking about like in a bag? Like in a bag of 200? If I want 60 or more, I can't use 60 here because I want the 60th candy to be strawberry. So when you use binome CDF for a greater than problem, you need to drop down one in your x value to get the correct answer. If you don't drop down one x value, you're not going to get the right answer. Because you want the 60th. Yeah, I want 60 strawberries. But my CDF only works for less than. So I need to drop down to 59 strawberries and subtract from 1. So I'm going to do 1 minus binome CDF, number of trials 200, uh, 0.25 for the probability of success, and 59 for our x. So binome CDF is right below binome PDF. Newer calculators is going to prompt you. 200.25, oops, not, 59. And then I'm going to take that answer and subtract from 1. So 1 minus my answer, which gives me... Oh, point zero six two five. Wait, why is why is greater than or equal to? Oh, yeah. Why is fifty greater than greater than equal or equal to fifty nine? Not the same thing as greater than sixty. Because I mean, if it's greater than sixty, then it's not including. 60. Right, so greater than or equal to 60 yeah. would be the complement 1 minus the probability that I have 59 or less strawberries. I can't have 60 strawberries here and 60 strawberries there. It has to be in one or the other. But is, is that not the same as if you just took away the equal to? Because that can't be equal to 60. Maybe so, if works. I, I mean, in theory, yes, I could say the probability of x being greater than or equal to 60 is 1 minus the probability that x is less than 60. But if I put that, kids don't change this number. So, I focus more on because. This function only works with the equal to part. So I have to drop down a complete number. Now that's only for greater than statements. If I was doing a less than statement, I would use the x value I'm interested in. Did that clarify more? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Notice that the probability I get 60 or more strawberries is much bigger than the probability that I got no strawberries. It's very weird. Like there's a 6% chance I would have gotten 60 or more strawberries and yet I got none. Not a single one. Can I flip? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so. Some information, and I'm going to go through this 
relatively quick. If we were looking at a shipment of 10,000 CDs, and we know 10% Mason are defective, what's the probability that in an SRS of 10, I get no CDs that are defective? There are 9,000 out of 10,000 CDs that are not defective. If I pick that CD out, I'm not gonna put it back. So then there's only 8,999 out of 9,999. And I would do that for all 10. The last one being 8,991 out of 9,991. Now you could type in all those fractions or you can trust me it comes out to about 0.3485. When we use our binomial distribution, that binome CDF, which would take 10, choose zero, 0.1 to the 0 times 0.9 to the 10. It would give us 0.3487. Very similar, right? So when it comes to sampling without replacement, we can use a binomial distribution as long as our sample size, little n, is less than or equal to one-tenth of capital N, your population. And that's where that whole we can assume independence because knowing we picked a CD that was not defective does change the next probability. But using the actual probabilities and assuming independence makes such a small change in the probability that we allow ourselves to assume independence as long as our sample size is less than one-tenth of the population. To prove the point even more, Boys, I'm still talking. Notice here our sample size is 10. The probability of success is 0.8. There's your cumulative, or excuse me, your probability distribution function. As I increase my sample size, what happened to my graph? It well, But it also got more... Oh. Normal. More normal. Oh, yeah. And then as I increase my sample size even more, look how bell shaped and normal it looks. It looks like a so, we can actually use normal CDF as long as our number of successes and failures is greater than or equal to 10. And we'll get the same answer, just slightly different, like the probabilities up above. So really quick, because I still have three minutes, we're going to use normal CDF to show that they're actually the same. So we're going to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 60. Mason. Our mean was 50. Standard deviation was 6.124 when we rounded. Now, 
We do need to make sure that the number of successes and failures is greater than 10. n times p is your mean. So n times p was 50. 50 is greater than 10. My number of failures would be the not strawberry. And if I had a sample of 200 and 50 of them are strawberry, how many are not strawberry? 150. So the number of failures is also greater than 10. So if we use normal CDF, the probability that we get 60 or more strawberry flavors. We don't have an upper bound, so use a really big number. And 60, by the way, would be here-ish. And we're looking at that area. Sixty, really big number. Fifty for the mean, six point one two four for the standard deviation. We get point zero five one three. What did we get with the binomial distribution? Was on the previous page. Point zero six. What was it? Zero six two five? Two five. Number six, very bottom. Point zero six two five right here. Right there. Time to go. Oh. 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 Oh.